I didn't see you there, Sean. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming in today. Sure thing, Miles. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our hard apple cider now that it's all done. We're going to taste them. You'll recall we used four different yeasts. We used Red Star Premier Cuvier, Bread Yeast, QA23, and what was the last one? Yeah, the... Uh... Oh, yeah, the Ale Yeast. Safe Ale SO4. So we're going to see if the yeast made a subtle difference, a big difference, or no difference at all. Mmm. Like kind of rotten egg, kind of yeah, it's a little sulfur, sulfur, yeah. sulfur kind of sour. It's tart, yeah, and it's tart. It's tart. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit of apple. Yeah. It's leaning with the apple flavor for sure. Yeah, Fleischmann's. Ooh man, it to me it smells like cooked turkey. Cooked turkey. <laughs> yeah, I want to see if you get that when you smell it. Like Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah, still kind of sulfury too. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. Talk about tart. I like that one more. Yeah. It's less like... It gets me right on the edge, mm -hmm. right on the cheeks there. Less sour, don't you think? Or in a... Sour in a different way. It's sour in a different way. It's like yeah. the back of the palate. Ugh. This one's fruitier to me. In the smell, really? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see, now that you said it. I mean, not like fruity... Apple fruity, but... Like a spoiled basket of fruit. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, this is like a, a warmer tone. Like yes. It has a little tart, but it's, it's like more center palette. And... Yes. Oh, this one smells the best by far. This one smells the most like fruit, the least like sour and spoiled fruit. It's just better. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no fermentation y yuckiness. No, no. I, I like it. Oh, that's the best one. It's like almost like a little bit of peach flavor in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, to me, it tastes like a tr like a, I would have wanted apple cider to taste. What we wh why we did this is we were gonna pick the best one to not add fruit to. We're just gonna keep it as an apple cider. So we're gonna keep the SO4 just as it is, and then we're gonna add fruit to these three. So what we want to do now is rack or siphon each of these into a one gallon jar. Now let me explain this thought. Each of these is three fourths of a gallon. We have a gallon jar. So that's going to leave a fourth of a gallon of air. Do you, under, do you understand that? Uh, yeah, the math makes sense to me. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. Sean's a little slow sometimes. So <laughs> we're going to siphon them into the one gallon jars. Okay, and we're going to have a fourth of a gallon of air. You don't want to have air in secondary fermentation after the primary fermentation is done because air will threaten to turn your cider into vinegar and it'll also strip away flavors even if it doesn't turn them into vinegar. So we want to fill up that space, get rid of the air by filling it with fruit. And then I have a different plan for our fourth one that's just apple cider. We'll get rid of the headspace in a different way. Racking is just a fancy word to describe siphoning from one container into another, okay? And we're going to be using an auto siphon. It's just tubing with a plunger, and it allows you to create the siphoning action by pumping it a couple times, and then you can leave it be, and the siphoning action works on its own. So that's what we're going to use for each of these, okay? There are links in the description to all the tools and all this stuff. You can even click those links and then buy all of your Christmas gifts early, and I still get a little bit of financial help for this channel, which is really nice. The one thing you want to get right when siphoning so that the siphoning works is you want to have your original vessel elevated above the vessel into which you are siphoning and then gravity can make the siphon work. So that's what we did here. So now all we're going to do here, because you'll see, this is too much headspace, too much air for secondary fermentation. So we're going to displace it by putting fruit into it. A word on the fruit that I used for this, I just used frozen fruit from the store. You can use fresh fruit and then if you want, put it in the freezer because when you get fresh fruit and then you freeze it, the water that's in them turns to crystals and it helps break down the fruit. Water expands when it freezes and gets more flavor to be extracted once you put it into your cider. So that's something you can do that's really helpful. Now you may be wondering, what are we gonna do with this fourth one here? We don't know, we're not adding fruit to it. So what are we gonna add? You guessed it, marbles. We're putting glass marbles into it. Glass is a substance that will not leach flavors into our cider. So we're gonna add glass marbles into it all the way until it displaces the liquid into the neck. So Sean, 
grab the sanitized glass marbles from down there. And now just, you know, don't be dumb, but yeah. What Sean is also doing right now is degassing it by aggravating the liquid. Good job, Sean. <laughs> Thank you, Miles. <laughs> so as you can see, we added pineapple, strawberry, blueberry, and then just kept it as apple. All right, so it's kind of hard to tell with all the foam here, but it's at 1.000, so it's totally dry and there's no residual sugar. Now, if you did take gravity readings on this, the, the initial gravity reading, which you'll remember was 1.044, and let's say you took a final gravity reading was 1.000. Well, then how do you calculate alcohol? Because that's you can use those two readings to calculate the alcohol percentage. You take your initial gravity reading minus your final gravity reading and multiply it by 131.25. So in our case, that's 1.044 minus 1.000, which is 0.044, times 131.25, which is? You got me, Miles. Well, Sean, 5.7%. But I'm the math major, so that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason we don't have to be too worried about headspace right now is that there is a lot of sugar that we just reintroduced into our fermentation from the fruit. And there's probably still active yeast floating around here. I didn't filter it, I just siphoned it. What that means is that the fermentation on all of these will probably continue. And that's why I'm not just getting a lid and making these closed containers. I have airlocks for each of these because the fermentation, more likely than not, will continue. And were we to close it all off and the fermentation happen, what would happen, Sean? These would explode all over the place. They would, it would be a mess and very sad. For our last one though, um, I don't really wanna just keep it as plain apple cider, I wanna make a spiced apple cider. So, as Sean is holding here, we're gonna add one cinnamon stick and one vanilla bean stock right into it, and we're gonna leave it in there as long as we leave the fruit into these. Now that immediately raises the question, how long are we gonna let these sit on the fruit? Well, Sean's gonna tell you. We're gonna let this sit on the fruit for... Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Any longer than two weeks with fresh fruit just makes me nervous. So we're just gonna leave everything in here, including the spices in this one, for two weeks, then taste all of them, and we should be good to go. We'll siphon it out of here, and then I will, sh I will show you how to bottle condition. That's gonna be two weeks on our part, but it's only gonna be a few seconds on yours. Now, if you notice these actively fermenting, and even if you don't, what you wanna do once a day each day is just kind of swirl it around. That keeps the fruit inundated in the liquid for maximum flavor exposure, and it also keeps them wet to frustrate mold growing bacteria's attempts to ruin what you've worked hard to create. We will see you in a few seconds. So everything has been going swimmingly, except for the pineapple, which didn't really break down. The other fruit kind of turned to mush, especially the strawberries. That's what you want to get all the juice, all those flavors. Pineapple didn't do that. So I decided to try and force it manually. I got a potato masher and just mashed them up as best I could. And that was that was the theory anyway. It didn't really work. It didn't break them down much more. That's okay, now I know that. Next time I think I'll puree the pineapples. Then I wanted to rack them off of the fruit at least one more time before I bottled them. I got four different containers of apple juice. They sell these 3 4 gallon jars with apple juice in them. And so it's not a gallon, it's 3 fourths of a gallon so I could rack into them film all the way to the top to produce headspace. So that's what I did here. And you could do that too. They, they sell these pretty much any grocery store. So I racked each of them. Again, I'm just doing this to get them off the fruit, get them a little more clear, a little more clarified before we bottle them up. So a few of these I had to fill up with some marbles because even with the three fourths of a gallon, there wasn't enough wine to fill it all the way to the top. So that's, that's what I did and that's okay. You can do that too. And I just, put the lid on three of them, but the pineapple I think is still fermenting, so I put an airlock with a bung. So last time you saw us, it was the 15th of June. Today, what, really? No. 15th of July. That's right. Yeah. What did I say? June again. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so last time you saw us, it was the 15th of July. Today is about the 11th of August. So these have had about a month to sit and clarify. I'm okay with a little bit of haze. I just don't want fruit pulp in them. There's no fruit pulp. That's why we racked it once off of the fruit. They've sat, you'll see on like the strawberry in particular, there's some sediment. That's just fruit pulp and yeast. It's settled out. It's not gonna get into our cider, so you're okay. So what we're gonna do today is wrap everything up. We're gonna rack each of these into a pitcher, taste them individually, and see if they need to be sweetened. We're gonna sweeten with a non-fermentable sugar erythritol. I find that it tastes pretty much like sugar, and most people agree. 
So we'll sweeten it as much as we want with the erythritol, and then we'll add a tiny bit of fermentable sugar, just white table sugar, and that is what will allow us to bottle carbonate these. But I'll explain that in a second. All right, hard cider number one, our spiced apple cider. This one, we put the vanilla bean and the cinnamon stick. So we're gonna see what this one tastes like. It smells amazing. Mm. Yeah, it smells like apple pie. Like the, the spicing is really light. Mm -hmm. That's nice though. It is nice. I think it's very nice. I almost am happy about that because last time I did the apple pie wine, mm -hmm. it was nothing but cinnamon. So it's light. It's no, really I, light. The vanilla, I think, is a good balance to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just racked it into the pitcher. Pretty simple. We're going to be sweetening it, as I said, with erythritol. If you wanted to sweeten it with just white table sugar, maybe you don't like non-fermentable -sugar, non sugar, sugar alcohols, that's fine. But what you would have to do then is add chemical stabilizers or pasteurize it. You'd have to do some method to kill off the yeast. Otherwise, you risk uh, the fermentation going too far inside those bottles, eating up through all that sugar and the bottles exploding. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that. So that's why we're only adding a tiny bit of fermentable sugar. That's for the carbonation. But then the sweetness primarily is going to come from the non-fermentable sugar. Do you understand the concept? I totally get it, Miles. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to add one-fourth cup, stir it in, and we'll taste it. Go ahead, John. All right. Okay. Yeah, now it, it tastes a little bit sweeter, just a, a touch sweeter, but it kind of took the edge off the tang that I was getting from it. So now it's just really light, refreshing apple cider. Hey, Miles, so we're adding our priming sugar. Do we put it directly in the bottle? No, Sean, but we, we put it into the pitcher. Uh, the, way, the reason I like to do that is that it ensures an even distribution of the sugar across all the bottles, whereas if you put it individually, you just can't guarantee that you're getting the exact same amount of sugar per bottle, all that. And you really want to be careful with this step. If you're estimating how much sugar to use for bottle carbonation, underestimate rather than overestimate. You'll end with a little less carbonation, but the bottles won't explode on you. We are going to be using 16 grams of priming sugar per three-fourth gallon. And each of these are three-fourths of a gallon. I calculated that using an online calculator. There's a link in the description here and there's probably a projection of it right now you're looking at. So 16 grams, we're putting it in. Now it's time to go into bottles. I'll show you a video for us doing it to one of them, but I'm not, I'm not gonna show it to you for all of them. It's just, you get the idea. Which is, we're gonna siphon it with that auto siphon into the bottles, but what we are doing differently than when we're just siphoning is we're using a bottle filler, which is really cool because when you, it has a stem valve here on the end and that when you push in, the siphoning action happens and when you pull out, it stops. So you can move from bottle to bottle without making a mess. That's pretty cool. Yes, it is. All right, one down, three more to go. Let's taste the blueberry. Mmm, still smells a little fermentation-y. Tartar. Tartar. More tart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of tastes like blueberries to me, like the mm -hmm. skin of a blueberry mm -hmm. is what it tastes like to me. But it's interesting. It tastes pretty good. It's not gross. No. And that's what I'm going for. As long as <laughs> all these aren't gross, I'll count that as a win. Yeah. All right. Time for erythritol. Start with the fourth of a cup. I like it. Yeah. I like that. I get, now that you add a little bit of sugar, um, I get a little more blueberry, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah, so do I. Kind of the, the, the fruity taste. So good. Now we just add our priming sugar. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to do that now. I'm not show you because you saw it the first time. It's the exact same thing. Two down. Two to go. Strawberry. This one I'm really excited about, and I hope it tastes good. Are you excited, Sean? I'm very excited. Mm-hmm. Oh. That smells good. It does, it does. I could smell it from over here. Oh man. It smells like nothing but strawberries. Yeah. Yeah. That smells awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Mm. Tastes like strawberry juice to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. That's super good. That's like really good. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to sweeten it. Nothing. Do you, Do you agree, or what would you what would you say? 
Do you think it needs a little bit of sweetness? I think it needs a little bit of sweetness. Okay. But... Yes. Okay. Maybe a touch. All right. Because Sean thinks he's a winemaker now, <laughs> we're gonna add a little bit of erythritol. Just we're adding an eighth of a cup because I think this thing tastes so good. As far as flavor goes by itself, this is one of the best I've ever made. Um, and I don't want to it up with too much too sugar. much sugar. So an eighth of a cup. Sometimes you're just sweet enough already. Mm-hmm. I think that's really good. Me too. It's, it's not overly sweet, but I just don't want to risk it. Mm -mm. You know? I don't think it should be overly sweet. Okay, this is the last one. Pineapple. This is the one that's hazy, but that's okay. Again, it's purely an aesthetic thing. It's not going to impact the flavor. So if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. Are you okay with it? I'm okay with it. All right. Tart. <laughs> Tart, yeah, something. It's not a whole lot of pineapple. He like the aftertaste is nothing but pineapple to me. Yeah, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad at all. Okay, so we lost a fair amount when we racked it into the pitcher. There was just a lot of sediment and fruit pulp at the bottom, and it was moving around and starting to get into the siphon, and I just, I don't want chunks of fruit floating around in my cider, so we only got a little over half a gallon. Now I know that about pineapple. We'll figure out a way to do that better next time of how to get the most product, but that's okay for now. Four. It's also, look at the top. And it's foamy. It's, what the heck? All right, so we're gonna add about one fourth a cup more. So half a cup total of erythritol. It's so funny how when you add some sweetness, like that tartness is still there a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's really muted. So I think this is a good balance. Yeah, I think so. Oh, whoa, hey there. As you'll notice, my hair's different, my clothes are different, everything's different, Sean's gone. That's because it's been some time since you just saw us. We were going to film the conclusion, but he ran out of time, and then I said I'll do it later that day, and now we're here a month later. You know, it happens. So... What would I do differently next time with these baddies? Well, the first thing I would do differently is incorporate pineapple differently. The chunks of pineapple in secondary didn't really break down, didn't really release all their juice, and we lost a lot of product, so I might puree the pineapple next time. We'll, we'll see. Number two, I would use a higher quality apple juice because the ones that we used were from Walmart. They're tasty and great for your first hard cider, but once you know what you're doing, you can afford to use higher quality apple juice because then you'll get higher quality hard cider. Thirdly, I would use Safel SO4 on all of the different varieties because that's the one that made the best base hard cider. And so once again, if you use a higher quality product all around at every step of the process, you don't have to try and correct for those mistakes by infusing a bunch of fruit flavors that hopefully blanket over the issues from the yeast and, and so on. So I would just use Safel SO4 to make the best base hard cider, which will then make the best final hard cider if we add fruit on top of that. So now let's open one of them and see if they carbonated. I know that they did because I drank some of these, but for you, let's check it out. Oh, it's a little bit. Yeah. Nice. Hopefully you can see that. Some decent carbonation. Smells like a subtle apple pie, which is exactly what I wanted. It's really tasty. The cinnamon and the vanilla come through well, and it's just carbonated enough. I, I might have gone for a little more carbonation, so maybe we shoot with more priming sugar next time, but that's pretty decent, and I'm really happy the carbonation worked. So, you have successfully made hard cider. Good work, and we'll catch you next time. In the meantime, watch any of my videos. We have a pretty big, growing library of fun stuff to watch, so watch it. And if you like this video, like it and comment and all that stuff and have a lovely day.